Okay then everyone, Pranaunta, Kroisio, good afternoon and welcome to this Cabinet meeting on the 24th of July 2024. The first agenda item this afternoon is to appoint the chairperson. I am Councillor Steve Ant, leader in East Portalba Council and I will be chairing today's meeting of Cabinet. General item two is the chair's announcement. So can I uh, welcome to all members and members of the public or press view in this meeting. Please can you ensure your microphones are switched off. You are here to observe the meeting only. Members and officers, please ensure that your phones are switched to silent for the duration of the meeting and that your microphones are switched to mute unless you are speaking. In addition, when asked to raise your hand, if members who are virtually attending this meeting could raise their electronic hands and members in the chamber physically present, can you raise your hands, please? Agenda item three are declarations of interest. Are there any declarations of interest from members this afternoon? Please, would members say what the items are and what the interest is? And uh, if you have any, I'll ask Tami to forward you an electronic version of the form for you to complete an email back to her. So are there any declarations of interest, please? I see no hands, Chair. Thank you, Tami. Agenda item four are the minutes from the previous meeting of Cabinet held on the 10th of July 2024. I refer to pages three to 16 of your agenda pack. The minutes are here for approval of accuracy. Can I ask members if they have any comments? I don't see any. So I'm happy to propose these on an accurate record of the minutes. Could I have a seconder, please? Well, here you are, please to second. Thank you, Alan. Members, if you do, do not indicate to the contrary by raising your hand, I will assume that you are content with the accuracy of those minutes. And tell me if you can confirm again, please. No indications to the contrary, Chair, so those minutes have been approved. Oh dear, thank you. Agenda item five is public question time. The hand go up then, are you a thing? No? Okay, sorry. Agenda item five, public question time. I have received no notifications from the public to speak at today's meeting. Agenda item six is the corporate plan 2024 to 2027, working towards a more prosperous, fairer and greener MPT. The report is on pages 17 to 116 and is here for a decision. I'm going to introduce this report for members that are present. The purpose of the report is to seek endorsement of the Cabinet to the draft corporate plan 2024 to 2027, prior to the plan being considered for adoption by Council on Friday the 26th of July. The draft plan was scrutinised by the Committee of Finance and Strategic Leadership Scrutiny Committee on the 18th of July 2024. Over the last two years, since the publication of the 2022 to 2027 corporate plan, a lot has changed. World events have driven very high levels of inflation and energy prices, which have compounded the cost of living crisis. This has pushed many more of our residents and businesses into financial hardship, and we are seeing far more demand on our key services. Adding to these challenges, the fund sorry, adding to these challenges, the funding made available by the UK and Welsh governments in the last two years has fallen significantly short of what is needed to respond to our communities. We have welcomed, welcomed major regeneration projects across the county borough during the last few years and have the potential to grow a large number of sustainable jobs into our future years including the free put status for the Port of Port Talbot, the announcement by Tata Steel UK Limited, Limited of a decarbonisation programme will see the end of traditional steel making at Port Talbot, and a move to a new technologies adding a further strategic dimension to the landscape. As part of the revised corporate plan, a set of strategic priorities have been identified, which will form the transformation programmes. There are nine programmes in total which will support the delivery of four well-being objectives. Resetting this plan focuses our priority over the remainder of the political term and is essential 
to service and financially sustain us ourselves going forward. Cabinet this afternoon are asked to consider the corporate plan and, if considered appropriate, commend the plan to Council for approval. Can I ask officers if they have anything further to add on the corporate plan? Karen? No? Thank you. Oh, sorry. Karen? Thank you, Leader. Um, it's just to give um, some feedback from the scrutiny observations that were made at the Community Finance and Strategic Leadership Scrutiny Committee last Thursday, 18th of July. At that meeting, observations and comments were made on the draft, and it was requested that an amendment is made in the document where the term offer is used in the context of delivering a strong tourism, leisure and culture offer. The request was the term offer to be replaced with offerings. If Cabinet agrees today to commend the plan to Council for approval on Friday, officers will make that change to the plan before it's published. Thank you, Chair. Oh, thank you, Karen. Members, any questions? Alan? Yeah, do, do, can I, just very, very, very briefly, uh, I'd like to uh, express thanks to uh, Noilwyn, Karen, Louise and colleagues who uh, have worked very hard for, for the liaison uh, with all directorates. Uh, this has been a new approach to ensuring that the corporate plan feels owned by all parts of, of the Council um, and that it's a, a realistic but ambitious uh, document uh, which hopefully will be used as a working document across the authority in these very challenging times. Um, and I uh, certainly hope that it will be supported by all members at full Council this week. Thank you, Alan. Any further comments from cabinet members? Um, with what Karen has put in, and that is the proposal, I'm sure all members are supportive of, of that. This item is proposed for immediate implementation and will not be subject for the call in process. Do I have the support of the rel relevant scrutiny chair for this agenda item, please? Phil? I'm happy to support the recommendation, Chair. Thank you very much. I now refer members to the recommendation on pages 21 and 22 of your agenda pack and the associated appendices, which includes the IIA. I am happy to propose this agenda item. Could I have a second, please? Paul Hill, you are pleased to second. Yeah. Thank you, Alan. Can I ask, are there any abstentions? I don't see any. Members, if you do not indicate to the contrary by raising your hand, I will assume that you're in favour of the recommendation. Tammy, can you confirm, please? No indications to the contrary, Chair, so that has been commended to Council. Thank you. Thank you very much. Agenda item seven is the Strategic Equality Plan 2024 to 2028. The report is on pages 117 to 188 and is here for, the, for a decision. Can I bring in the Cabinet member for this uh, portfolio, Councillor Simon Noy, please? Thank you, Chair. Uh, the purpose of, the, of this report is to seek endorsement of the Cabinet to the draft revised Strategic Equality Plan 2024-2028, prior to the plan being considered for adoption by Council on Friday the 26th of July. The draft plan was scrutinised by the committee, sorry, Community, Finance and Strategic Leadership Scrutiny Committee on the 18th of July 2024. The Council has produced three strategic equality plans in April 2020-2012, November 2015 and September 2020, the latter delayed due to the pandemic. A significant period of time has passed since our last plan was published in 2020, yet the challenges, inequalities and injustices apparent then and no less so now. Our communities continue to face increasing pressures due to the consequences of global conflicts, inequalities caused by the impact of the pandemic, inflation and energy prices, more see people seeking help from social services, more people presenting as homeless, and more children are needing extra help in school and travelling to school. It's against this backdrop that equality objectives contained in the 2020 plan were reviewed utilising recent local, regional and national research publications, feedback from internal act engagement activities and engagement with interested local groups, as well as relevant strategies and plans that are already in place or being developed. The outcome of that review was that the equalities objectives remained relevant to our communities in Neath Patolvat. 
changes that were required were in relation to the actions to meet those objectives and significant work has been undertaken to identify relevant actions with measurable outcomes to meet our equality objectives. Some existing actions have been amended while new actions have been identified to reflect current circumstances. Revising this plan has been a true corporate effort with input from across the council and I'd like to praise, please praise our officers who have been involved in the process. Cabinet are asked to consider the revised Strategic Equality Plan 2024 to 2028 and, if considered appropriate, commend the plan to Council for approval. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Simon. Can I ask officers if they have anything further to add? Uh, Anita, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, just one thing to add with reference to the scrutiny observations from Community Finance and Strategic Leadership Scrutiny Committee last Thursday, the 18th of July. So at that meeting, it was requested that the action plan in the draft Strategic Equality Plan be amended to indicate which officer department and cabinet member owns each of the actions, also to make it clear where actions are linked to or taken from another strategy or plan. So this won't materially change the plan, but it will make it easier to track progress going forward. So if Cabinet agrees today to commend the plan to Council for approval in September, then officers will make the changes to the draft plan before then. Thank you. Thank you, Anita. Uh, members, do you have any questions? Uh, Simon? Can I just add, Chair, that um, I'm thankful to Anita and her team for making those changes following the Community Finance and Strategic Leadership Scrutiny Committee comments that were provided last week. Thank you. Thank you, Simon. Any other further comments from members? I don't see any. So we'll, with those recommendations and, and changes, I now refer members to the recommendation on page 121 of the Agenda Pack on the IIA. I'm happy to propose this agenda item. Can I have a second, please? Paul Fiorello, can I do it? Thank you, Alan. Any abstentions? I don't see any. Members, if you do not indicate to the contrary by raising your hand, I will assume that you're in favour of the recommendation. No indications to the contrary, Chair, so that recommendation has been approved. Uh, thank you, Tammy. If I move on to agenda item eight, which is the annual governance statement 2023-2024, the report is on pages 189 to 290 and is here for a decision. Um, again, this is for me to present. The annual governance statement for 2023-2024 is being presented to members today to demonstrate the internal control in place to ensure the governance across the Council is robust. Prepared to support the draft statement of accounts, the annual government governance statement also sets out how the Council has monitored the effectiveness of its governance arrangements in the year ending 31st of March 2024, and also identifies improvement areas where more work is required to further strength, strengthen policies and processes. The draft annual governance statement has been presented to Governance and Audit Committee on the 12th of July 2024, and scrutinised by the committee, which is the Finance and Strategic Leadership Scrutiny Committee, which was on the 18th of July 2024. So I am happy to propose this agenda item. Uh, sorry, I now refer members to the recommendations of members. Sorry, I lost track. Sorry, officers, do you have anything further to add? Sorry, uh, Karen. OK, members, any questions on this agenda item? No, I now refer members to the recommendations on pages 191 of the agenda pack. I'm happy to propose this agenda item. Can I have a second, please? Well, here you are pleased to second. Sir. Thank you, Alan. Any abstentions? I don't see any. Members, if you do not indicate to the contrary by raising your hand, I will assume that you're in favour of the recommendations. No indications to the contrary, Chair, so that recommendation has been approved. Thank you, Tommy. Agenda item nine is the Neath Portalbot Digital Data and Technology Strategy Review 2024. The report is on pages 291 to 338 and is here for monitoring. Again, can I now bring in Cabinet Member to introduce this report, Councillor Simon Noyle. Thank you, Chair. Uh, our Council recognises the importance 
digital data and technology plays in underpinning the successful delivery of our council services. I'm pleased to put forward the annual report on the digital data and technology strategy, which sets out the excellent progress that digital services have made in delivering against the four strategic delivery themes. 43 projects have been successfully delivered, ranging from major core infrastructure replacements to developing career pathways linked to the digital professional framework, all with a clear focus on delivering against the agreed benefits realisation statements. Also, during the 2023-2024, there, there have been several in, in, independent scrutiny exercises undertaken on the digital data and technology strategy, including the Audit Wales Digital Strategy Review. The findings of the report were very positive, with only one recommendation being identified, which has since been addressed. Officers also engaged with the Welsh Local Government Association to undertake their digital self-assessment review in January of this year, Feedback on the Council's position was extremely positive, scoring 65 out of 65 on the topics covered. The, the WLGA went on to comment, the Council's strategic approach to, to digital is well aligned with its other key plans and strategies and those of its partners, and it has strong arrangements to communicate its strategic digital approach. The forward look for digital services to support the Council in delivering against the corporate plan will be challenging. But with the foundations they have, that have been put in place, we're in a strong position to meet these challenges head on. I've met with Chris uh, Allen and his team very recently to go through this, and I hope you will all join me in acknowledging the significant work undertaken by digital services over the last year and continue to give their support to the delivery of the strategy going forward. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Simon. Chris, have you anything further to add? Nothing further to add. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Members, any questions? Can I just also reiterate what Councillor Noyle has said? I mean, I, I believe we lead in the way, and that's down to you and your team and those partners, Chris. So please, on behalf of Neith Patal, but County Budget Council, keep up this excellent work. I think it's recognised in the WLGA and across Wales. So well done to you and your team. Thank you. Apologies, this report is for monitoring, as I mentioned. So I move on to agenda item 10, which is the delegation of council functions under section 16A of the RTRA Road Traffic Regulation Act 1984 to Welsh Government for road cycle races in Wales. The report is on pages 339 to 350 and is here for a decision. Uh, can I bring in the Cabinet member to introduce this report? Councillor Wyndham uh, Griffiths, please. Oh, sorry, Nicola. You. Okay. Yeah, sorry, Wyndham, I've caught you haven't had a briefing and Nicola's been away. Over to you, Nicola. Hello. Can I come in there, Chair? Who's that? It's Dave Griffiths. Oh, Dave. Okay. Over to you, David. Yeah. If you're happy, uh, Nicola, I can cover the item for... Um... Councillor Griffiths. Um, yeah, this is basically asking uh, Council to delegate the functions to Welsh Government purely for the writing of the legal um, traffic orders required. Um, the event organisers would still need to apply to the Council um, via the Safety Advisory Group for, for um, permission and all other uh, requirements would still need to be satisfied in terms of insurances uh, and indemnities to the council and the like. Um, there would also be um, a requirement for Welsh Government officers to make uh, enter into early dialogue with the council to plan the events in, in advance to ensure that the network has no construction or utility uh, service providers working on the network. Um, so it, it, it's purely um, delegating powers to Welsh Government as they currently don't have those powers to enable them to uh, write the legal orders. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, David. Nicola, did you want to add anything? Same thing. Thank you. OK, then. Can I ask members if they have any questions on this agenda item? I don't see any. I now refer members to the recommendation on pages 342 of your agenda pack. I'm happy to propose this agenda, agenda item. Can I have a seconder, please? Okay, Leo, please to second. Uh, I... Thank you, Alan. 
Can I ask members if there are any abstentions? I don't see any. Members, if you do not indicate to the contrary by raising your hand, I will assume that you're in favour of the recommendation. No indications to the contrary, Chair, so that report has been approved. Thank you, Tommy. Agenda item 11 is the Trading Standards Legislation Update. The report is on pages 351 to 364 and is here for a decision. Now, I'd like to bring in a cabinet member to introduce this report. Councillor Ken Phillips, please. Thank you, Leader. This is a, a very simple, straightforward uh, report. It's really it's an administrative measure to update the constitution and bring it into line with some legislative changes that have been identified as part of a review process. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Members, do you have any questions on this agenda item? I don't see any. I now refer members to the recommendations on pages 359 of your agenda pack. I'm happy to propose this agenda item. Can I have a seconder, please? Well, here you look at it. Please to second. Thank you, Alan. Any abstentions? I don't see any. Members, if you do not indicate to the contrary by raising your hand, I will assume that you're in favour of the recommendations. No indications to the contrary, Chair, so those recommendations have been approved. Thank you. Thank you, Tammy. Agenda item 12 and agenda item 13, and I, I'm sure Craig can interrupt me if I'm wrong, but they both traffic orders. Uh, can I take these agenda items uh, collectively? Is that appropriate or do I need to do them separately? No, I'm comfortable with that, Rita. You can do them um, together. Oh, thank you, Craig. OK, so agenda item 12 and agenda item 13. David, did you want to comment on these traffic orders, please? Um, nothing to add, Chair. One's purely to advertise um, with objections to come back, and the other one is the provision of an IDPP to a resident in London Road. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, David. Members, do you have any questions on either item? No? So I now refer members to the recommendations on the relevant pages, page 380, 381 of the Agenda Pack, uh, for the traffic order of London Road. I'm happy to propose that. Can I have a second, please? OK, look at it. Please, for a second. And I also refer members to the recommendation on page 366 of your agenda pack for the RB Primary School uh, traffic order. Can I, I'm happy to propose. Can I have a second for that, please? OK, Leo, please, for a second. Any abstentions to both? Don't see any. So, members, if you do not indicate to the contrary by raising your hand, I will assume you're in favour of both recommendations. Tommy, you can confirm this for me, please. Yes, no indications to the contrary, Chair. So, both of those uh, reports have been approved. Thank you. Thank you very much. Agenda item 14 are urgent items. I do not have any this afternoon. And that will conclude the business of Cabinet for this uh, afternoon. So, thank you for your attendance. And that ends the business of today. Thank you, Thank you.